I wanted to make this video to talk about why, even if you don't have Adobe Atmos system, if you're streaming content with an Apple TV or other types of devices, you still want to have your content sources, your streaming device, send the audio as Adobe Atmos. Again, even if you don't have a full on Dolby Atmos system. In my living room here, I have my 83 inch LG G2 OLED and I have a 2.2 audio system. You can kind of see the in walls here, some Focal 1000 series, a pair of those. And I have my Triad bronze subwoofers, 2.2 audio driven with a combination of Anthem uh, preamplifier or Parasound amps. So no surround sound, no overhead speakers, no immersive audio in here. However, the combination of like an Apple TV, specifically in this case, the 2022 Apple TV 4K, this LG and how I have things set up, I still consume or stream Dolby Atmos Kodak audio in this room. And I think it's the superior way to do it. So what I'm doing essentially is having the Apple TV output audio via HDMI to the LG television itself, where the LG TV is configured and allowed to basically tell the Apple TV, hey, I can support Dolby Atmos, send it to me. And then the TV actually down mixes that or kind of decodes it down to a two channel PCM signal that goes via an optical audio cable actually to my Anthem STR. And the result of that is, that again, even though I don't have immersive speakers, I don't have surround sound speakers, I'm streaming better quality audio into this room by virtue of that setting than I would get otherwise. So let me show you how to set this up specifically and talk about like where that fundamental difference in audio quality comes from. So if I look at my Apple TV right now, video and audio settings, I can see that my audio output is set to the TV speakers. Technically that's not entirely true because it, the audio flows through the TV down to the more advanced processing. But from the Apple TV's perspective, it thinks it's outputting to the, to the television directly, which is the TV speakers. However, here in audio format, I have Dolby Atmos on and change format off. I want the Apple TV bit streaming out that streamed Dolby Atmos codec without changing it, mucking with it, or doing anything along those lines. Now, if I look at the actual LG TV settings and I go to all settings, I go to sound, I go to advanced settings and I go down to select HDMI audio input type. You can set this discreetly for each different input of the television. I have my Apple TV on HDMI one of the LG television and here I'm set for bitstream. Now, I really like this LG TV. I think this is a virtue of LG as a platform because my prior television, my Sony X900H didn't actually let me do this. My Apple TV into the Sony would only ever recognize and output two channel PCM. It wouldn't actually give me the Dolby Atmos signal. So if we come over here to iTunes and I've got Top Gun Maverick here, gonna go ahead and start playback to Top Gun Maverick and take a look at what Apple iTunes is telling us it's sending us for audio. So what am I getting? And this is using like the background kind of debug developer mode feature of the Apple TV. It gets me this streaming technical format HUD overlay. So if I look at the audio description here, I've got audio codec QEC3, which is Dolby Digital plus Dolby Atmos, 16 channels, Dolby Atmos. And I've got an audio bit rate of 770 kilobit. That's as high as you can get for streaming Dolby Atmos quality. iTunes sends Dolby Atmos at this level, Disney Plus, HBO Max. There's a bunch of services that will stream you Dolby Atmos, and many of them will hit now up to this level of quality. That's a pretty decent bit rate for streaming audio, given the fact that it's Atmos in the codecs that they use. So I'm going to back out of here, stop the playback. I'm going to go back over to the Apple TV settings. Now let's go back into the LG audio settings. We're going to go to sound again, advanced settings, all the way down here, select HDMI audio input, and we're going to change this to PCM. So what this is doing now is basically having, having the TV tell the Apple TV, Hey, I don't support Atmos. I only support two channel PCM audio. Now on the Apple TV, if I go back to video and audio, 
and we go down here to audio format, change format is off, but note audio will be decoded and sent to your equipment as uncompressed multi-channel LPCM. So there's no mention anymore here of Dolby Atmos. The Apple TV no longer thinks or understands or believes that it should be sending Dolby Atmos out its HDMI cable to the downstream devices. So let's see what happens when we go back and we play Top Gun Maverick now. So I'm gonna flip back over here, Top Gun. We're gonna play again. Just resume playing, same place in. And I'm not editing any of this out in between. I wanna kind of show the whole, the whole thing. So there's our, our view. Now what are we getting? We are getting audio codec QAAC, AAC audio, which is an Apple uh, like lossy compression audio codec. And our audio bit rate is 131 kilobit. Very, very significant reduction from Dolby Atmos. This is a two channel, very simple, lower quality, lower fidelity mix of the audio for this movie than if the stream, if the Apple TV, if everything connected and it actually provided the Dolby Atmos stream up at that 770 kilobit. I would contend that again, even though I don't have surround speakers in here, I don't have immersive speakers, I have a 2.2 audio system, I would rather listen to the downmixed Dolby Atmos uh, audio track for this film at 770 kilobit than the 131 kilobit more lossier, compressed, inferior codec two-channel version of the movie. So there you go. If you if you have a setup like this, you're you're pu pu uh, connecting your streaming device directly to your television via HDMI. Make sure that your inputs, your TV, if it allows it, is set up to do that. To, to inform the source device that, hey, I can do Dolby Atmos, send me that Dolby Atmos, and let everything, the downstream processing, work with that higher bit rate, rather than kind of hamstringing the whole thing and starting with a lower quality two-channel mix to begin with. So that's a pretty technical topic, I know. If you have some questions about it, any clarifying questions, post them in the comments, I'll be happy to respond or hit me up on another live stream. This is a topic that we can dig into a little bit more in a future live stream. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video as well. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, I've got super thanks, Amazon affiliate links, merchandise, and a whole lot more down below in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this lets you power up your audio quality of your maybe less than immersive surround sound systems. And come on back for more home theater discussion, technical details, all of that, and fun.